Uh, well, I was born with this voice. What can I say? <laughs> but are you? Do you, do you have like a high-end microphone? No, you just no, have, I don't. You just have a radio voice. Yes, I do. Oh, that's awesome. And, and <laughs> it's, obviously, it's not the first time you've heard it. But yeah, keep going. People Thank tell you. me that too, but I don't think mine's you, as good as yours. You, no, you sound great too. Oh, um, I've been watching a lot of your videos, okay. listening to a lot of your podcasts. Love that. And, Love um, that. Uh, there's a specific topic I have not heard you address, mm -hmm. and I wanted to, to, to ask you about it. Okay. I, I did search for it, too. Um, what is your opinion on finding local clients via direct mail marketing campaigns? Interesting. It's interesting. I think everything that we do, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell you what, the macro and at the micro, right? Yeah. Everything that we do in terms of marketing world is all about ROI, right? and return on investment meaning even if you went and did the the postcard marketing right or or the direct mail marketing would the time energy and effort that you spent on that be as impactful as working on the channels that we've verified and know are successful so you always have to balance that in your head that's number one number two um you know one of the reasons that i've not explored that or i've not explored text marketing right is almost no one almost no one ever takes action on that stuff and, and I'm not saying you would or you wouldn't, but the, the, the corollary is this. Hey, Patrick, um, and, and this also goes to ROI. Hey, Patrick, do, I, I just wanna sell to interior designers. I know my work is incredible. I know I'm gonna do such a great job selling to interior designers, so I just wanna figure out how to do that. And the premise in, 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 in most folks' head when they ask that question is like, this is the way that it's gonna work for me. I know it's gonna work for me, but what I'm really saying is I don't wanna do any marketing at all. I just wanna, I just wanna talk to the interior designers, right? Because when I tell right. them, okay, there's a website called House, okay, H-O-U-Z-Z, -Z, and everything that's on there for the most part is an interior designer, right? And here's what you've gotta do. You've gotta go onto that website and effectively scrape it manually, meaning I want you to put 10,000 interior decorators into a spreadsheet, and then I want you to visit their websites, I want you to visit their Instagram accounts, and I want you to send up 150 messages a day to these interior decorators, letting them know you exist, and I want you to do that for the next year, right? That would yeah. be an intelligent way to approach the interior decorators and maybe have it be successful. I still don't think the ROI will be there because those folks, it, those relationships take a ton of time to build. Everyone's got a different style. A lot of times yours doesn't fit into it, but if you did that, you'd stand a chance, right? So right. direct mail marketing, but, do I think it's like, you know, super inexpensive to do that? I do. Do I think there's a lot of people doing it? No, I don't. Do I worry about the junk mail component of it and, and how, how insane junk mail is in today's day and age? A little bit, but you could get around that, right? So I think you could potentially pull it off. I think if it were me, and this is like one of the most common failures that people get is like, I'm going to try advertising. Right, I'm gonna try advertising and they go and they boost a couple of posts on Facebook or they run ads appropriately one time on Facebook and they do it for a month and they're like, okay, I'm gonna do it for a month uh, and then see how I did. And if I get an ROI, I'll do it again. Right. You're not gonna get an ROI in one crack at it, okay? Yep. You're gonna get an ROI after you do it sustained consistently for a year, right? Yes. And then also, you're not gonna get an ROI at it if you're not doing all the rest of your marketing, okay? So the way that, the way that marketing works is you're always gathering leads in every capacity imaginable and understand leads are anyone that looked at the postcard you sent them or anyone you actually get on your email list or anyone that follows you on social. They don't just automatically have their hand up ready to buy art, right? All you're <laughs> attempting to do, step one, is get them into your ecosystem, okay? And once they're in your ecosystem, then you need to be consistently marketing, okay? Such that I'm seeing you time and time and time and time again all year long. Then I, you are top of mind for me when you're, when you're actually ready to buy art, okay? So I don't think the postcard thing will make it at all if you're not doing the rest of your, of your marketing, okay? And if you're not exactly. doing, yeah, and if you're not doing the rest of your marketing, if you're not capturing emails, you're not emailing the emails regularly, and you're not posting on the socials regularly, and you're not having sales, and you're not running live art shows, no, I do not think you will get an ROI out of it. But, but, I, I would be eager to see the test and I would probably even help you on the test in all honesty. Well, I'm, I, I plan when I move, what, th that's one thing, uh, one aspect of uh, trying to find uh, uh, local clients, not necessarily uh, mm -hmm. uh, 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 designers or anything like mm -hmm. that, but just local clients. I know how to do, use these services and narrow in on particular demographics. And of course I have a budget and uh, I know the process on uh, procuring a mailing list and, and mm -hmm. getting it, get, and I know what the budget is. So uh um, I, uh, this is something I want to do once I move to the town, mm -hmm. and in addition to everything that I'm going to do with regard to your system. Yep. Um, uh, but, uh, I would like to throw this on top and just kind of experiment. 
Yeah, I love it. I love it. And and w- one thing I would say though that I think is even more interesting, and I'm remembering it now, but like a year ago, okay, um, we have these same kind of Zoom calls like this internally for customers. And we call it office hours. And talented painter, Colorado had like a Colorado niche going on. I can't remember what the town was. For. It wasn't Fort Collins, somewhere around there. And we were talking through the same strategy, and he's like. I saw, I saw, I saw the 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 hockey stick and the rollerblades in the background, right? And you know where I'm going with this already. Mm-hmm. And she's like, "Yeah, my kid, my kid plays roller hockey. My whole street is just slammed with roller hockey." I was like, "Okay, so what you're telling me is you have a bunch of young kids, all of which that need a job, all of which could get a backpack together and put that flyer instead of the mailbox on the front doorstep via rollerblades. Now we're cooking with gas." And he did it, and it worked. And he totally got an ROI out of it. And I don't know if he's still done it. I got to go follow up with them. But my point is, is that, you know, it's insanely cheap to do the mail. I get that. And, and getting on the door is just a little bit less noise, you know? I mean, don't get me wrong. I don't know how your neighborhood is. But in my neighborhood, sometimes they're putting, like, maid service and, like, annoying, like, landscaping and stuff well, like that. So there's, there is real, th- there's real, that too. Real quick, mm-hmm. um, I get uh, I really don't get that much mail. I do live in a in a very nice area, mm-hmm. and so I do get some occasional direct mail marketing, and I have acted upon it for uh, that's how I got the skylights in my house. That's how I got my trees trimmed. Awesome. That's how I found about new businesses in the uh, community. And I, I get so little mail that when I do get something uh, like this, I examine it. Mm-hmm. And I don't know, maybe I'm an anomaly, but <laughs> yeah, but I, I I think it would be awesome. and I, and I also think um, I also think that like everything that we do in marketing and and in, in in attempting to sell art is they're one in the same. Like everyone like conflates the two things, but like I'll give you I'll give you a couple examples, right? Our websites are designed from the ground up to look exactly like the best in person art buying experience out there. What is the best in person art buying experience out there in a gallery? When you walk into a gallery, they're all the same aren't they? Yes. They're white blank walls. There is just the art. Maybe there's some nice furniture and there's nothing else. Now, if we were, if artists were smart and understood that everything in the retail world is what we attempt to do digitally and backwards, then they would be like, okay, my website should get as close to an art gallery experience as possible. What does everybody do instead? They introduce so many goofy colors and sliding image things and crazy fonts and everything else that the art ends up being second stage, right? It's why all these portfolio sites, none of them work. And, it, and it's like, walk into an art gallery. How many goofy, distracting things have you ever seen in an art gallery in your entire life? You haven't. No one has, right? They don't, you don't do it that way. Another one, another one, um, and, 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 then I'll, and then I'll close it out. Another one is why Zoom is so damn effective for selling art, okay? The best way to sell anything is in person, face to face. Zoom, video, just like this. I can see your facial reactions. I can understand who you are, get to know you, bond with you. Your dog comes walking into the Zoom call. You got a dog? I've got a dog. We're both dog people. Now I know, like, and trust you, right? Like, that works insanely effectively. So, where I was going, it goes both ways. And the secret to that direct mail will be you can't just do a one off. You got to do a, like a three to seven, seven, seven cent sequence. You know what yep. I mean? Like we yep. would do an email. So exactly. I'd, I'd, I'd love to talk about that when the time comes up. All right. Thanks. Yep. And what's the town you're moving to? If you don't mind me asking, I'm curious. Uh, or what state? Uh, Say what state? Uh, uh, Des Moines, Iowa. Good for you. Big art city. Good for you. Yeah. Yeah. I live in, I live in California. Trust me. The, where are you potentially moving to is a regular conversation topic out of the earth these days. <laughs> Oh, everything is Thanks so a lot, Patrick. Yeah, thank you, Mark. Um, good question, though. I really enjoyed that. Would like to. I, I see Randall's question in the chat. I want to receive this with time frame of year. Okay, but Daniel's left. Um, all right. Oh, Andrew, are you clapping or you have a hand raised too? Oh, you're clapping. Oh, you got a question too? I'm gonna I'm gonna unmute you. So no one else has their hand up, which means I just start picking on the people that are brave with the cameras. So you'll just Andrew, if you just hit the mic icon in the bottom left hand corner, that'll that'll unmute you. Can you hear me now? Yeah, I gotcha. Okay. Um, I have sold individual pieces Mm -hmm. for several years. Okay. um, But kind of a one one at a time basis. And I have never gotten into a true volume process before. Okay. So I am wondering, is there a basic start amount to the number of 
um, pieces piece that you need to have? No, have it's one. You no, start? it's one. It's one. And the reason it's one is because there's like there's like this list of like 15 things, okay? And here's how I'd answer it. And, and trust me, you're going to be nodding your head on this. I'll just get started when, okay? I'll just get started when I photograph all my work. I'll just get started when I get the bank account set up. I'll just get started when I have 15 pieces. Then I'll be ready to go. I'll just get started when I decide between my two niches. End the hours, turn into days, turn into weeks, turn into months. How's that art business coming? You've taken no forward steps. You've made no forward progress. And honestly, do not take that in the slightest cynically. I don't care if you do business with art storefronts or not. I do not want you BSing yourself that you think you don't, you don't have everything to get going right now today. You absolutely have everything you need to get going right now today because if you don't start plugging away on some of that stuff, you're never going to launch the business. You're going to be contemplating the what ifs and you're not going to be taking any forward steps. So uh, th those pieces, those pieces you sold, were they two people not named mom, dad, brother, sister, family, friends? Uh, mostly family, friends. Mm -hmm. um, a little bit beyond that, but not Good. a whole lot. That's how it starts. That's how it starts. So we got. So you. So you. So if we looked at the map, right? If we looked at the map, well, I don't, I'm not going to pull it up again, but we would we would instantaneously put you in that 30 day rapid test to try and see whether or not you have traction. Okay. It's, that's that's right where you need to be. You only need one piece to start doing the marketing. Obviously, we would want you to have a few more pieces to increase your odds of success, right? Mm -hmm. But the point is, even those baby steps on the map are going to take you some time, right? And then in that time, you, you know, you do some creation too. But the fact that you sold a bunch like that, very good sign, um, good starting point. But we need to know for sure that, you know, what you're doing is a style that a lot of people want, it, that, you know, they want. So that's what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. Is it valuable to market to the area that you live in? Yeah, absolutely it is. 100% Because it is. I've just recently moved to Denver, and that's mm -hmm. definitely our, our community. Oh, I, love, I love that town. Great town. I just went for the first time on, on a bachelor party. The thing I fail to wrap my head around is the fact that those scooters are strewn about everywhere. And, <laughs> and, and yeah. there's no one telling you not to do it at 10 o'clock at night coming out of a bar. <laughs> oh, but I had such a great trip. Um, I, I, had, I had such a fun time on that. So, yeah, great, great town. Great town. Okay. Thank you. And there are a ton of local opportunities in Denver too. And so I'd probably challenge you to do one of those. And sometimes it, it, it helps to two months from now, there's a show, there's a show on the calendar that you can get into. You pay the booth fee or you pay to exhibit, and, you know, it could be a farmer's market. It could be at a brewery of which there are some insane ones in Denver. Right. And they would let you exhibit in, in the brewery and cement that thing on the calendar. And then no, you got to have seven to 10 pieces done by then, Right. But then you've turned over the hourglass and the sand's coming out. Right. So, you know, these are, these are the tricks you got to hack yourself into doing and saying like, okay, I'm going to get it done. I'm doing it. Okay. Awesome. Thank you. Thanks, Andy. All right, Joseph, you're up next. And you'll need to unmute, Joseph. Yep. Yep, I gotcha. Awesome. So, um, I travel around a lot because mm -hmm. uh, I'm Navy and me and my wife, uh, we're looking at going back out to Japan. I'm wondering if... Uh, like how things would work like overseas or anything like that or what do you what are you what are you selling uh, i sell pyography art i'm actually working on one right now yeah awesome so the originals would always be with you do you have any intention of selling reproductions of any kind uh, no not really i um so far i've just done a lot of custom art mm -hmm. um like uh what i would do is uh like he he or she would ask me if uh, like what sizes I would do, which it all varies, mm -hmm. and uh, like I really only charge on the size of the board, the amount of detail, and how long it takes me. Okay. Right then, and uh, um, mainly I've only sold to like friends, family, or mm -hmm. just Facebook messages. Yep. Like, hey, uh, I was wondering if you were able to do this and. Uh, my usual answer is, uh, well, I'll try my best or anything. And I haven't gotten a lot of complaints so far. I have gotten a couple of people that copied my stuff, mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. uh, posted on their wall saying they did it and all that stuff. That's why. Yeah. Don't, don't, like don't stress about that. I know where you're at. Um, just we're in Japan. Just out of curiosity. Is it Okinawa? Uh, Yokosuka. Yokosuka. I love Japan. That's not a great place. Um, I think one, knowing the transitory nature of, of, of your career, right? You're probably not going to be in Japan for life, 
right? It'll probably end up being short along with everything else. The only issue you would have is the shipping. That's it, right? But I think, you know, given your story, you know, active duty U.S. service member, and by the way, Dave in the chat says thanks for your service. I second that. Um, thanks for serving us. Um, I think given your story, people, it, it would probably become a part of the story, right? And people would probably be not not like bummed out to pay for the shipping. And this is, to be honest with you, it's one of like the things that make me so happy at the end of the day. Art has not been as Amazonified yet. And what do I mean by that? There is no expectation of free shipping. It doesn't exist, right? Like all of our customers charge shipping and everyone is totally okay with it because art and photography, wall art has not been Amazonified. So if you made it part of your story that you're in Japan when you're creating this, the only downside is that you, you have to charge a couple extra bucks for shipping. I think people would be totally cool with it. Honestly. Okay. Yeah. I don't think you'd have any problem at all. And then you would just take the North American orders or, you know, really or, or wherever the orders came from, the site would process for you, deposit it in your bank. I don't know if you would have to convert that to yen or if you keep it in US dollars, what you do there, but that's, that's how it would go. Okay. Awesome. Yeah. That cover it. Any others? No, that's, that's really my only question I had. All good. All right. <laughs> We'll keep doing it, but we do need we do need a way to get you to sell some things that are not just originals, right? I want I want you to be able to sell some prints and reproductions, some other things like that. Okay. All right. Yeah, I could definitely do that. Yeah, okay. Thanks again for the service. Later, brother. Kim, what are you doing on here? I had a question, and you happened to be on, so well, that's, here that's, I am. That's very smart. Kim Kim's actually a customer, but she knows she knows how to track me down. So yep. good on you. Go ahead. Okay, so recommendation to do a live show while I'm at a festival. Yes. As long as I'm set up and, and, and have everything going. Yes. The problem that I have with that is I'm swamped. I have people in my booth from the beginning of the show to the end of the show. Mm -hmm. do, it before so, the sh do it before the show launches or just do it during. Do it during. Okay. Don't worry about the people in your booth. Now, you know there's 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 a little bit of an angle and for everyone for context kim does a bunch of in-person shows right and one yeah, of the best I do about 26 a year 26 years so one of the best ways to get even more roi out of those in-person shows is grab you have this beautiful booth set up with all your work right grab mm -hmm. the camera and run a live art show right there in the booth kind of like i showed you on you know the earlier videos talking about the work merchandising it and then offering a special deal saying if you're in the area Right, we would love for you to come down, but if you're not, mm -hmm. for everyone that's not, I'm extending the same deals, right? So, I right, think, which I have, yeah. I do have discounts. Like I, what I try and do is put everything, like grab everything before I go, put it in a folder, upload it to mm -hmm. do a mm -hmm. live art show, so that it's ready and you, I can kind of like, hey, here's everything in the booth, but if you're not here, go 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 here. This is where everything's listed. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that's I, I've been having difficulty getting an opportunity because i don't want to like i you know you, you know what i would also people. almost I, I i totally i totally take your point i would knowing that you're going to be solo in most of the situations too what i would do is like find someone that find someone that looks like your tribe that you like and be like look i know you have no idea what a live art show is but do you have an instagram profile you do cool you're gonna film me i will film you we'll do it at the end of the day you and your booth me and my booth is that good good by the way That's did you cool. did, did you see the guy and 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 andrea i ambushed a guy in Denver, okay, on that same bachelor party I was on. Did you see me do this? No, I didn't. Oh, it was so cool. There's, there's, there's this like amazing like two streets, and there's a great restaurant and like this really cool bar on it. And then in between, like on the street was like a shipping container, and in the shipping was container, was it like 16th Street? Was it the 16th I, I Street? I, 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 I could. It's, it's on the art. It's on, it's on the art storefront's Instagram account actually. And okay. there was this guy inside the shipping counter. He's got art all over his walls in the counter, and I walked in. And, uh, and he's in there having a beer. I'm like, this is just so Denver. And I, I, I walk in and I was like, you ever run a live art show? He's like, no, no idea what it is. I introduced myself. I was like, we're going in, we're going in two minutes. Get ready. He's like, all right, I'll do it. And I grabbed, I grabbed the phone and I literally just made him go through a couple of pieces on the wall and offer a special and shut it off. And people were walking by all around outside. And it was raining. Like, oh, it's cool. So I love, I love that initiative and just going for it. Right. Yeah. Yeah, no, I've, 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 I've done it and I just the one thing that I have a problem with is I don't want to ignore the people that are coming 100% you because, shouldn't 100% you shouldn't but yeah. I, I the, the issue I have with that is I also 
don't want to not get exposure to your entire list, right? If they're, right. It, you know, and so how do you balance that? Yeah, and I'm doing more sales in person than I am on my site, and I'm trying to figure out, you yeah, know, I'm, I'm, you know, trying to, trying to get the trying to get the um, the online sales going as well as the in-person sales. Hundred percent. And by the way, come, we're doing a. I haven't announced it yet, but we're doing a topic specific workshop on Wednesday. Um, the bathroom art flash sale. You should come. Okay. Ele Eleven Pacific. On uh, uh, Wednesday. Yeah. Okay. You should come. It's gonna be good. It's gonna be fire. Okay. Cool. All right. Bye. All right. Thanks for popping on though. Can we appreciate? It. And you got a compliment on your hair in the uh, in the chat from Avia. Avia likes it. Um, and I think Joseph, did you pop off? You turned your camera off, but John had an interesting feedback about FPO APO shipping, which I assume is um, which I assume is military shipping. That's probably even cheaper. So definitely check that out. Craig, do you want to do you want to unmute and talk so I can get your question? How are you? Thanks for taking my question. Yeah, my pleasure. Very, very interesting. I am a realtor. And okay. I have to tell you a lot of your um, marketing points that you make tend to mirror what I've been doing. And so I get it. Yeah. And I believe 100 percent. So yeah. for any for anyone else on this that is unfamiliar that's the name of the game period and the story that that's my take on it i will love your presentation yeah a main question that i have mm -hmm. is um you know what types of of art in quotation art you know everything's mm -hmm. art in my in my opinion i yep. love it all will this type of marketing work for all and i it. put in my all of it. in my question to you can it go from T-shirts to canvas to prints? Yes. Um, uh, I don't know. Can you expand on that? Please? Yeah. All, 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 all of itself. So like at the end of the day, you know, you guys are creating the creations, right? And if people like them, they will buy them. And the the, the media type was sort of irrelevant because, um, you know, there are different strokes for different folks. Everybody likes a different thing, right? Um, everyone everyone tends to gravitate towards the thing that they're really into, right? And not everyone needs the same thing at all times. And so when you have these various different products, you just open yourself up to more revenue opportunities. And so all of it can potentially work. But also, too, it ends up being, um, and by the way, thank you, Juan. Sorry, someone on my team was telling me he's gone. Um, it's different for every person. And there's no rhyme or reason to it, right? Like okay. some people will like do really, really well on one product type and some people will do really, really well on another product type. And then sometimes the balance will just flip. So for me, going back to that map that I showed, the prices are just really, 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 um, you know, important to have that range, right? But for you, the interesting thing is every home you get a listing on, do you, and do you, do you get listings or do you just represent buyers? <laughs> A little bit I everything. try to get listings, you know, the, it's very few and far between here at the beach. We're uh, in Maryland, mm -hmm. Ocean City, Maryland. So, you know, it's no one ever sells homes. No one ever sells those homes. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but where, where I was going with it, because it's a good idea and you're a realtor, I'll place it in your head. But you come into the home and be like, hey, I've got some and, you know, and I would create art for the market that I'm in. Right. And you're, you're selling a bunch of Maryland beach homes, I'm sure the the art would be beach decor you know and reflective of the area and you say like hey just to let you know you know i've got i've got about 50 pieces i'm an artist and i've got about 50 pieces in inventory that are very very uh, effective maryland beach art okay and let's just let's just call it maryland beach art for now if you want to stage the house with them we can go ahead and stage the house with them um, I have some pieces that'll go great, great, great here. And a lot of times what I do is I'll, I'll, I'll do this to help my customers sell no different than, a, you know, staging with furniture. And what I find is a lot of times people just want to include, include the art into the purchase price of the house, because then they can finance it on a 30 year fix, which is insane. Right. So <laughs> there's, there's, or, you know, or a 10 year arm or whatever loan they get. So yeah. there's, there's, there's another, you know, it's not gonna. It's not gonna. You know, explode your business overnight. But it's another arrow to have in your quiver and something you should always pitch. And to be honest with you, you, you know it'll help sell some homes. So contemplate it. Very good. I appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks, Sean. All right, Dave, you're up next. Go ahead, Dave. Oh, that was Craig. John, sorry, I lowered your hand. I just got confused who I was talking to there. Yep. 
You're unmuted, John. Go ahead. Hey, um, not really sure if this is the right uh, venue for this thing. I just wanted your take on it. Yeah. With all the pivot, all the pivot action we've been doing, been mm -hmm. uh, rolling on that. We finally did a uh, a live and sold one of my new pivots. The other yeah. Day. Awesome. So that was cool. Yeah. And you've been telling me to do a live, and it was actually pretty fun. Yeah. <laughs> it is. That's what everyone says the first time. Like it's it is pretty fun. Yeah, we've been doing a lot of lives on the beach and stuff mm -hmm. in the mornings. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I had this idea for um, the, the world through my window, I think I'm calling it. And I, I got an old antique window, took it down to the beach today and did some shots. It was kind of cool. Yeah. But then while I was uh, uh, editing this morning, I blundered on something uh, that's a little abstract away from my normal sunrise, sunset. And mm -hmm. I just wonder if you could take, if I can share a screen and you could take a look at the, the before and after. Is it, it, do you have like a retouching question in that capacity? No, just more of a, you know, just a, a take on, you know, a visual take. Okay. Um, well, you're a customer. You get access to me on the inside, but send it to me, send it to me today and I'll, I'll, I'll respond in email. Patrick, okay. at, Patrick at Arts Reference. Okay. Thanks. Okay. Thanks, Sean. And, and, and good on you for the pivots. I love it. All right, Dave, sorry about that. Go ahead. Hey, not a problem. Um, I appreciate this uh, Zoom call first cool. and foremost. I'm here basically because a lot of other people are telling me I should be selling more of my art. Mm -hmm. But I have a, I prefer to live under a rock and I keep most of my art out of the public eye. Mm -hmm. I know I need to push through this. Yeah. Because I do believe in, in, I've sold enough to know that I think people are right. People would buy my product. I just have to crash through that fear gate. Yes, you do. And embrace the uncomfortable, yes. which I honestly don't know why I have a problem. It's just, it, it, it's just a, men, it's just a mental block. There's like, I see this in such a regular basis and, and, and sometimes it's, it's where yours is. Sometimes it's with raising prices by which I mean like a level of terror to raise the prices like you've never seen, right? There, there have been times where I've had to log into the customer site at night, raise all of their prices for them because they just physically couldn't do it. Sometimes you need to be carried kicking and screaming through the thing, right? But I wanna go back and challenge your first part of the question. Who is telling you that you need to get your art out there and show it to more people? Are those strangers? Is it a family? Are those friends? What are we talking about? Um, all of the above. All of the above. When the strangers tell you that, say you take, from now on, say I take cash, Credit, MasterCard, Visa, Venmo, PayPal, make an offer on one of these pieces and then shut up and see what they say. Train right. yourself to do that. It's powerful. It is absolutely powerful, I'm telling you. And, and just say, no problem. Everything in here that's not nailed down is for sale. Make me an offer and just shut up and see what they say. Because yeah, then yeah, you I know. Do. Then you know whether or not they're just fluffing your ego or if they're, if they're like, you know what? I am interested in one of these pieces, right? Yeah, I'm just getting to the point now where I will hand out a card and I will promote myself, where mm -hmm. it's usually it's whoever I'm with. It's like, hey, this guy's a great photographer. You should take a look at his stuff. So yeah. I've got a long way to go that way, but I have a large catalog of stuff that um, I could put up. I tend to put up small collections of 10 to 15 pieces, and I'll run that for like six months to a year. Mm -hmm. But um, I don't have a plan for marketing, and that's something that, you know, I find very interesting about what you guys are doing yeah. to help the creative mind over here be organized and point them in a direction where they can be successful. 100%. 100%. And, and, and not only do you need that support, like you want to say you, everyone needs it. You'll never not need it. You'll right. never not need it. You need it. You need it year one. You need it year five. You need it year 10. You need it year 15. Like it, it, the support structure and the encouragement, like, you know, all of you guys at the end of the day, solopreneurs, right? Like the hardest business to start is, is be, is the hardest thing to do period is to be an entrepreneur. When you're a solopreneur, i.e. you don't have an office full of people helping you out and, and, and giving you other thoughts and like ducking you up when you're down, right? And having the support structure, like that makes it even harder. That makes it even harder to do, right? So, you know, when you, when you have a support structure and you have people that are constantly c encouraging you, it, it ends up being just as important as the actual marketing advice. And, and, and at, challenge me on that, John, because John's a customer. I want to hear him actually speak to this. One second. Let's just see what he says. What portion, John, and i got to find you so I can unmute. What portion, how valuable would you say, 
John Morris, you have to unmute. Do you find the community in the encouragement in contrast to the straight marketing advice? How would you how would you stack rank this? It's all, I mean, it is all so dynamic, it's all linked. You know, it's hard to say one piece of it or another. Mm -hmm. It's it's the everything. It's seeing something online this morning or just now, you know, it's like, oh, let's see what's going on, what's Patrick got going. Um, just to be able to share ideas, you know, the the small wins, the Instagram stuff, all of the training, it's definitely well worth it. I'm loving it. Yes, thank you. But he, what 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 he doesn't know that I do know, Dave, is like artists and photographers, year after year after year after year after year, treat the marketing portion of their business like a New Year's resolution. This is going to be my year. I'm going to do it. In January 1, you're going to the gym four days a week, right? By March, you've been once the entire month, right? It's out the window, and then everything stops. Everything stops for a year, right? And you don't take it seriously. And I, what I've found, and in, in, you know, along this journey, like you know, that we found as a business is like the community support portion, and 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 that's everything from the tech support to what what John was mentioning. We have a Facebook group that all of our customers are in, and they all buck each other up and say, "Hey, I got this win. Here's how I did it." To me riding your ass sometimes and saying, Dave, we're all running a sale right now. Why have you not got that sale in the water, right? So it's a combination of carrot and stick sometimes. All of that collectively, like, yeah, yeah John's laughing because I'm, I'm constantly on his ass sometimes too. Like, what are you doing? We, we, we got to take action. You cannot stop because what no one understands, and this is the other crystal ball question I get, like, how many hours a week do I have to, do, do I have to, do, do, to vote to this, right? How many hours a week do I have to be at it? I don't care how many hours a week you've got to give me, but give me those hours 52 weeks a year and watch what happens in your business, right? It's about the, it's about the stacking of just week in, week out, showing up and putting in the work that you have the time to do. So that part's critically important. It's critically important. So, so Patrick, do you guys have data on I, what size pieces? I've always believed I like the idea of wall art. Most of the canvas I'm selling now are 30 by 40s. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you had mentioned the flash sale of the, the bathroom art, yeah. which I love that idea, but I have nothing even remotely close to that. Yes, you do. You can size it down to those sizes. So, so the problem, have, yeah. See, yeah. On my current website, you know. Oh, I, oh I, yeah, I, yeah, 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 yeah. So, like, go, go back to the presentation I had. Like, you know, you, 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 you have to have these different price points, right? And the thing that's so genius about the bathroom art sale is, one, small pieces. No one's bathrooms are huge, right? One, small pieces. Two... Two, okay, people like buying series, right? Like two, you know, two or three to like cover a bathroom. Three, everyone's got bathrooms and the walls are tiny, right? So you're keeping the price point smaller, right? You're, you're giving yourself an excuse to run a sale that you can run at any point in time of the year. And the more you're selling, the better you're doing. And it, it's an inexpensive way to get introduced. And, you know, I, I tried to say this earlier, but it's so true. It's like, do you know the best way to get someone to buy one of your bigger works? get a beachhead in their home with a smaller one, right? You get a beachhead with a smaller one, and then the next thing you know, you're in contention for above the fireplace mantle, right? You're in contention for the, for the big dogs in the hallway or wherever they're putting them. So it's just, you got, you got to get those sales, and you have to, you have to be able to, to get the most ROI out of the marketing efforts that you do have. So that's what I'd say. So, so what do you tell someone, Patrick? Because obviously coming on board with you guys is quite an investment. Yep. So addressing that that skeptical part of me going well i'm going to part ways with anywhere from a thousand to eighteen hundred dollars mm -hmm. and i'm still not exactly sure what the differences are there but you know that would be something else that i'm going to need to over overcome yeah and based on what i've already learned on this on this call that fear is diminishing a bit but it doesn't reduce the amount of money that the initial outlay is yes yes it you, you have to you have to make the decision if you're ready to do it for real, if you're ready to do it for real, you know, what we find, and it's, impo it's impossible not to take this cynically, but the bigger, the bigger, the plan that the person ends up buying, the more they burn the boat, right? They've burned the boat. They have gone, they have taken the boat to the other shore and they've lit it on fire because once you've invested that kind of money in this, you are not going to let yourself fail or quit. Right. And why so many artists fail is they go and they find, a $9 a month website or a $12 a month website, right? Or $99 for the year website. And they're like, eh, what do I care? It's a hundred dollar commitment. That's not going to break me, right? I don't need to keep showing up and doing the work. So 
don't don't take it as a you need to start now and you need to get signed up. Take it as a if you are ready to commit, watch what happens. Where you aim your wallet, you aim your heart and focus, right? And that is just an absolute truth. So when you when you when you make this type of commitment, you're going to end up just going head down going I'm going to make this happen no matter what and it's going to help you cr crash through the quitting points. But it's only going to work if you're committed, right? It's only going to work if you're committed. And I think I'm to that point. So Okay. Timing was well. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. And don't worry. I will I will carry you kicking and screaming across that damn line if I have to. All right? Because it's just it all it is, all it is is like I will put on my coveralls and I will come in with the snake and I'm going to be like, "Dave, get out of the way." You got this stupid thing stuck in the drain. And then I will just use the plumbing thing and send that thing down there. And then once it's out, you're going to be like, that's it? That's all I had to do? Yeah, oh, that was easy. So, yeah, don't worry. Well, it, it, I, I've been down in that hole before, and I know the way out. Right? right. Yeah. I'll talk to you. All right. Nice. All right, Shoshana, you're back. Go ahead, Shoshana. And what, you and Kim know each other, I, I'm, I'm picking up from the uh, chat. I'm loving Kim. She is just an inspiration. Um, I'm new here. I'm mm -hmm. absolutely here in conjunction with my husband, who's an amazing, multifaceted artist, photographer, director, mm -hmm. filmmaker. Very cool. But you have inspired me so much thinking oh, thank you. Um, just of life's purpose and of all the opportunities and possibilities. I gave poor Harry just a head full. Thanks, ADHD, but I don't care. Mm -hmm. So my question right now had to do with um, uh, Craig's question mm -hmm. back into the art mm -hmm. and I realized the idea of art often is a 2D idea mm -hmm. um, and the ideology of handmade art and so I work um, in great detail mm -hmm. in the world of women's empowerment and what I see not only from everything you're doing here for this community and what I intend to do in conjunction for and with my husband is an opportunity for all these microcosms of women that are coming together to create art. And I absolutely agree this idea of handmade art, whether it's jewelry, accessories, mm -hmm. or apparel. So I'm wondering, as the world is moving into supporting through micro loans, the nonprofit sector mm -hmm. of art fronts that supports the nonprofit community, if that makes sense. Once again, I start talking and I don't have my ideology completely filled out. Yep. But I realized in this world of the grant writing and micro loans, whether it's a village, the opportunity for a village of women who are already well integrated to use this is amazing so i wanted to ask as far as the world of nonprofit, have you guys started looking at that and hopefully will you be willing to in the future look at that and support that demographic because i think it is just an incredibly important and imperative one yeah i mean if, if they've got cash and they want to sign up for a website we're we're, we're on board Otherwise, no. So that's where the grant writing yeah. for yeah. that but micro otherwise, no. yeah. to I, get them in. I and like. And then once they start funding, I just love it. And there's already so much out there that doesn't have access to all the genius work that you have. Uh, yeah, Shoshana, I would, I, I would say like, I love nonprofits. I support a ton of nonprofits. My wife and I both, both with our time and and with giving, and I love it, but. Ultimately, at the end of the day, I don't want you to get caught up in the nonprofit, not nonprofit, this, that, or the other. You still have to have a product to sell, right? And yeah, on well, the map, I, there's I no room for my husband's business, mm -hmm. which is already huge. I mean, that's already thing, and my own life's journey. So you've inspired me so much to understand the world of global funding in order to support people who might not be able to understand this mm -hmm. and get it. And so I'm super excited. So. Awesome. That's what I was asking. So I guess your answer is not yet, but when they're ready, we are here. Yes. That's what I'm yep. hearing. And we'll, give them, and we'll give them the greatest shot at the odds. One of the things I really do like to do, okay, though, and, and this is, I always give away all my best tricks because no one ever uses them. Um, how do you grow an email list, Patrick? I'm, I'm looking for creative ways to grow an email list. Okay, great, Shoshana. You are going to find one of these nonprofits that is having a charity drive or a charity auction drive or something along those lines and then you are going to put a bunch of items in your store that are 10 50 100 500 a thousand and those items are essentially raffle tickets 
uh, to 100 percent of which of the proceeds are going to go to charity. And the winner is going to get this print, this print, this print, and this print, right? And so you do a marketing event in in concert with the charity, and the charity has to be on board. And when the charity or the nonprofit is on board, they are going to give you exposure to their entire list, okay? And people are now going to come to your store, and they are going to buy these tickets to try to win the piece because they know 100% of that is going to go to charity. And you could have one charity event where you end up siphoning off 200, 300, 400, 500, 1,000 emails from that charity's list because they bought the thing because they wanted to win the art, right? that you get a market to now in perpetuity. So the charity lead generation partnerships are fantastic and they're a very inexpensive way, especially if you're passionate about the thing. So that's what I'd say. Awesome, thanks for Shannon. And a beachhead for the record, you know, for the formal, formal record is like, when you're invading a country, it comes from like World War II or even before that, you know, you're coming to invade a country and the, the, the country is trying to keep you off of the of the beach because once you have the beach you can start setting things up so that's getting the beach head like you know you're safe um yeah anyway that's what i got all right kim's got another one what do you got kim okay question about credit card processing yes. and whether or not we're going to be working with square at all yeah it's on the it's on the dev list already square for sure okay 100 percent. yeah okay yep. thanks yep um all right Anyone else? Questions, comments, concerns on the Monday, on the busy Monday? And I see your question on Facebook. I really appreciate you saying that. I'm in the same boat, but I'm starting to row faster and stronger because of you. I love that. I will totally take that. Type of flattery will get you everywhere with me. I'm glad I'm having an impact for you. Um, when's the best time to start an art business? 30 years ago. Oh, no. <laughs> Michelle's like, this is really funny in the chat. Um, can you explain why Squarespace is on the dead list? Square is on the dead list? Dev, D-E-V, development list, meaning we're adding it. Dev list, yeah, not dead list. Um, but, you know, I slur my words all the time, so I probably maybe I did say dead, uh, but it's a dev list. Um, yeah, all right. What else? Oh, yeah, Eve, you, you asked me a question. Oh, Eve, about taking payment. Um, you take PayPal, you take Venmo, you take checks, uh, you take cash. Um, they can send you a message on Facebook or Instagram or Messenger or Messenger Pigeon or Send a Raven. Um, all of the above is on the table. And she was asking, like, what's the best way to take payment during a live art show? We have, at Art Storefronts, we have these really cool pages that they can set up in two seconds and put all the stuff on. Kim was talking about it earlier. And that's, that's one of the ways that we think, um, you know, is the best way to do it. But, you know, early on, we didn't have those pages. And we were just telling our customers to run them and do the best they could. Right, so that's that's how that ended up going. Um, right during live or after after, you just you just say, hey, send me the way that it works. Eve, is you say, hey, whoever sends me the first message on this piece is first in line. If they don't buy it, uh, whoever's number two is second in line. Right, and you'll get people that are sending you these messages, and it gets a little complicated. She's asking about what you do during a live art show. It gets a little complicated in figuring out who is first or second, but you just don't say anything about that, and you just pick one, and you say, you ready to buy? And I say yes. You say, okay, here's my Venmo. And then you wait till you get the payment. Did you get the payment? No. Go back to number two, right? So that's how you do it, um, at least early on. But yeah, I would say, guys, if you're if you're, you know, just found out about us today, don't worry about it. We're not going anywhere. And you know, how much email do I send now that I have your email list? Okay, too much, too much email. Even our customers get too much email. We email all the damn time. It's a problem. Okay. Step number one is admitting you have a problem. I admit it, um, but it is effective. But if you've been if you've been around if you've been around for any period of time where you're like okay these people might know what the hell they're talking about and you're contemplating si signing up go get a demo the demo is the test drive you get to see everything all the ins and outs the bells the whistles uh, the features the marketing all the cool stuff that that Kim and John are using to grow their businesses and um, you can get one anywhere on our site there's buttons all over the place just request a demo I'll throw I'll throw another link in the check so I see Juan was putting them in here. Um, is that it? Yeah. You can just click that link, fill it out. Someone from our team will call you, and then you can make a decision if you're ready to go um, and get going and potentially burn your vote like Dave is going to burn his vote and then get, get your drain unclogged and start moving on the, on the path. Um, and, you know, one of the, one of, one of the fundamental things, um, yeah, Dave's asking 5,500 current clients. I think we're way over that now. I got to go get the updated count, but I think it's like 6,400 or 66. I don't even know. It might even be at 7,000 now. It's more, it's, it's more than that, Dave, I think. It's definitely out of the 5,000. Um, 
Yeah. Why do people leave ASF? That's a, that's a really, really good question too. Like any retail business, right? Like, you know, and I think, I think this is just an important thing. It's as important for your guys' business as it is for our business, right? But you know how you have a product on Amazon and then you bought and you're like, this is the greatest product ever. And you go on to read about the product and it has overwhelmingly positive reviews. And then there's like six or seven people that like rip the product and new, you know what? And you're like, how did that, how did that happen? There are just certain people in this world that you can't make happy no matter what. That's number one. Number two, um, we get a ton of people that will, not a ton, because we don't have that many people that leave, but we get some people that sign up and they don't do anything. Nothing. They do nothing. They do no marketing, no work, everything else. And whether we try to dissuade them of this notion or not, they think that fish automatically just jump in the boat, that in our business is like a light switch. You just flip it and the next thing you know, you're making $100,000 a year. It doesn't work that way. So we get some people that leave for that reason. We get some people that just quit and, and don't want to do it and don't want to do the work, period. But by and large, we have, we have like one of the highest retention rates of any software business out there. Like if you compare our rates to others, like most people don't leave at all or, or, or ever. Uh, most people hang around. But yeah, some people just don't want to do the work. And, you know, don't get me wrong. Like we're pretty doggone transparent about all of it. You can go to our Facebook page and you can go to the reviews tab and you can sort it by you know, one stars or two stars, and you can send those people a message on Facebook. Like, if they're easy to find. Like, hey, why did you quit, right? And you can decide whether or not it was us or them or some combination in between. But we have a very low, we have a really low cancellation rate um, on, on balance. But anyway, what I was going to finish to say is that so much of this business is regular marketing, da -da 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 -da, sale, regular marketing, sale, regular marketing, sale. And this happens all year long. And all year long, every one of these sales prepares you for the biggest sales, which are Q4. Black Friday, Cyber Monday, Christmas buying season. So we've got a few of these on the calendar coming up in the next 30 days. And you have time to get signed up, get going, uh, get bolted in and get a sale in the water because the sales are a fundamental part of this business. Um, and I talked about the workshop for you, John, Kim. I want both of you guys to come on that on Wednesday. Um, somebody was asking me about um, use your own lab or use the one affiliated with Art Store Friends. We highly recommend you use the one affiliated with us because then you don't have to touch anything ever, right? All you do is get an order, you get paid, printer gets paid, printer prints the order, boxes the order, put your sticker on the side of the box and ships it and you touch nothing. And that's all time that you get back to put on your marketing. Um, so that's what I would say uh, to answer Dave's question. All right, I'm gonna run out of gas. I'm talking myself into circles. I'm gonna go rest my eye. Um, guys, I appreciate all of you. Thanks for coming. Hope you found the session valuable. Hope you got some, got, some, got some good ideas out of it. I'd love to see you on the inside. So request a demo if you're interested. Um, and otherwise, I will send you the replay to this thing um, with a bunch of links and everything else. And so you'll be able to see all the this is the that's and the others. Thanks, guys.